We're listening to tornadoes to try to increase uh, warning times and save lives. We have measured a tornado, a small tornado that emitted sounds between like a tone at five to 10 hertz. We assume that it's producing the sound because the pressure in the middle of the tornado drops and then you get these fluctuations from the, the variation in terrain that makes it oscillate. And based on dimensional reasoning, you would say that then you would expect both the frequency to correlate with the size of the tornado and the amplitude to correlate with how low the pressure is dropping in the core of that tornado. So since we can measure this from up to 300 miles away, we have the possibility of, from far distances, estimating both size and strength of the tornado. So for each, each location, you're going to want at least three microphones so you can get a bearing angle of where the sound's coming from. And then what makes it tough to get infrasonic measurements is wind noise will contaminate your, your measurement. So what's kind of unusual is we have our microphone out in, say, a grassy area, a dome over it, and then we have a bunch of garden hoses coming out of it. And we spread out these soaker hoses, so they're porous walls, and we, we spread them out in like, say, an X pattern. You do that to do spatial averaging, so that wind noise that's going over the different components will cancel out because they're incoherent, while a large pressure wave from a geophysical source will be coherent over it. And you have three of them, you do the correlation between them to get where the signal's coming from. I'm studying if the effect of pool fire when it's burning adjacent to an ice wall. So you can say that I'm studying fire and ice. One of the uh, conventional methods they, uh, they use for oil spill cleanup in the marine environment is the use of uh, combustion to remove the oil from surface. When you ignite the oil in an uh, environment that has ice in it, the ice will melt. And that will change the burning behavior and the dynamic of cleanup tremendously. So what we had in uh, these experiments is a uh, 10 centimeter square glass tray where you have octane inside it and a three centimeter thick ice wall adjacent to that. When you're uh, imposing such a great uh, horizontal temperature difference on the liquid surface, you're inducing uh, surface tension uh, driven flows that facilitate transfer of heat from the flame toward the ice wall. That's why you see that uh, enhanced melting along the top layer of the liquid. The other effect is that because of higher density of water, that melt water will flow down. And now you have increase in level of the fluid because that water accumulation underneath the oil. And that can cause different things. For example, it can make the oil to overflow from its containment and go to somewhere else. It can extinct the fire and that's unwanted. The goal of in-situ burning is to remove as much as oil as possible. I study how uh, ice uh, interacts with the oceans with implications for climate. Sea ice is basically, it's ice that forms each uh, winter in the polar oceans. Uh, when you get through to winter, the temperatures get so cold up there in the Arctic and Antarctic that you start to actually freeze the surface of the ocean um, and you end up forming this thin layer of ice, so maybe a few meters of ice. But the thing we were really interested in understanding is how, when you grow this ice, how does the salt that was initially in the seawater drain out of the ice as it grows into the ocean and then how does that impact, which has important consequences for uh, ocean uh, circulation and mixing. If you think about the ice that we're familiar with looking at is things like ice cubes where you've got really solid uh, ice. One of the quirky things that happens when you freeze uh, salt water is rather than growing this nice pure ice crystal, you actually get something that's quite porous. Um, so you get a mess of lots of ice crystals with liquid salty water trapped in, in between those ice crystals. But because it's a lot heavier than the underlying ocean, it basically will want to sink um, down into the uh, underlying ocean waters and then this can drive um, some circulation and then that can have potentially have downstream impacts on things such as uh, how carbon is mixed down into the deep ocean. Things that are happening on sh relatively short timescales that we were studying, but the accumulated effect may add up to have a longer term climatic impact.